Hey, what's up everyone? This is Mike. Today is December 24th, 2021, Christmas Eve 2021. I was going to see two movies today. I was going to see The Kingsman, and then I was going to follow it up with this new Matrix Resurrections. And I did start to watch uh, Kingsman, but there was a very bad technical issue with the film. As many of you know, I am autistic. I have extreme OCD because I've done projection and I set up home theaters. All of the dialogue was in the front left speaker during the previews, and I mentioned that to them in the lobby, and they said, yeah, the center channel speaker is broken, so all the talking is going to come out of the left side of the screen. I said, forget it. I'll come back when you guys have it in another auditorium. However, Matrix was in their IMAX theater over here at the AMC Altamont, and I went and saw that, and... Where do I begin about this new Matrix movie? Um, I'm sorry to tell you guys this, but this is not going to be a happy review. I'm going to be extremely harsh on this film. I'm sorry to tell you guys this, but the short review... I mean, I'm going to give you all the details, but if you want the short review, this movie sucked ass. I hated it. I really didn't like it at all. I felt that this movie was trying to basically be a parody of itself and what it stood for. This film is a bladder-busting two hours and 28 minutes. I know, like I say, every week, I believe that was the same runtime as Spider-Man from last week. And, uh, yeah, everything about this film, it's, 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 it's like a retread of the other one, and it tries to be so metaphysical that it's, this Matrix film, it, it kind of gives me these Wes Craven's New Nightmare type of vibes, you know? But without the actors basically playing themselves. But the first 45 minutes of the movie completely do not sell me at all. And the look of the film, the cinematography, is not just regular, you know, digital as it is these days as opposed to 35mm as the other ones were. But unfortunately, the film has such a just awful artificial look to it. If you've seen the most recent trailers for the film, you'll see those bits where you got that girl with the blue hair jumping over the police cars, and it has that artificial, hyper, ultra smooth slow motion, but yet it's still not real smooth. I mean, to put it into perspective, a man named John Gaeta did the visual effects for the original Matrix film when they started filming it in 1998, and they used what was called Photosonics technology, which was a prism-based uh, rapid shutter that they used to get the authentic slow motion. And even though the original Matrix film won an Oscar for its visual effects, some of them now do look, of course, naturally dated because the film is, you know, 21 years old. But at the same time, it still holds up. There's a even balance. But the look of this film, the CGI and the slow motion stuff, I mean, it is laughable and it's very cringy. I mean, you've got moments that have natural slow motion and then you've got stuff that has that artificial undercranked look from Peter Jackson and Freddy vs. Jason, which is kind of coincidental because The Matrix Reloaded and then The Matrix Revolutions were released in 2003. And Return of the King, Lord of the Rings, was released in 2003, as was Freddy vs. Jason. If you've seen Freddy vs. Jason or the uh, Lord of the Rings trilogy, you'll know what I'm talking about when it comes to Peter Jackson's use of that not realistic, artificial, slow motion, undercranked look. This has a lot of that. And it's extremely distracting, and it's even more distracting that the film features so many callbacks and literally clips from the original three films. That it feels like rather than you trying to connect the dots, they just have to throw it in your face somehow. Like you're just stupid and you don't know what you're thinking or what you're doing. And I couldn't even tell you the full plot of this movie except that I know I'm going to lose a lot of you on this one. But much like how a lot of films are trying to be, and I have not a I, I, full disclaimer, I know I'm all over the place. I don't technically have an issue with this. It's just a trend because of the times. This is a film that's trying to push the female leader agenda sort of thing. I mean, first and foremost, 
uh, Larry and Andy Wachowski, they are now Lana and Lily Wachowski. They are transgender. They had sexual reassignment therapy uh, about 15, 20 years ago. More power to them. Got no problem with that. As you know, I'm a member of the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, but, you know, the film definitely, I'm not going to spoil anything. It definitely leans into, you know, females taking more of a leadership position and guys taking sort of a back seat, but yet somewhat still in the forefront. And again, it's just such a trend that's been going on these days. They did it with Terminator Dark Fate, and it tanked the movie. And when I saw this in IMAX, I can tell you right now, the theater wasn't even 70% full. I will be floored if this new Matrix movie makes it at number one in the box office. There ain't no way. I guarantee you, Spider-Man No Way Home will stay at number one because of three reasons. Number one, it's the most talked about movie in the world right now, and it has great reviews. Number two reason, it is rated PG-13, so everybody can go see it. And number three, this was the most anticipated movie of the year. Matrix, it failed, its third movie did, it failed when it came out in November of 2003. That was 18 years ago. I was a junior in high school when The Matrix Reloaded and Revolutions came out within months apart of each other. When I saw Reloaded, I still remember this, I saw Reloaded opening day at uh, Regal Town Center 16 in Kennesaw, Georgia. Slam, jam, thank you, ma'am. Packed to the gills. It was in Theater One, DTS, great sound, good audience, good time at the movies. And then when I went to see the third film, uh, Revolutions. It was at AMC Barrett Commons 24. It was in Theater 11. I'll never forget it. There was a guy named O'Neill. He let me in because I forgot my ID. You see, in those days, they were very serious. If something was rated R, you had to be 17 and up, and you had to show that ID. So I called up the box office, and I spoke to the one and only usher, or ticket seller, rather. His name was O'Neill, and O'Neill told me straight up, he's like, man, I'll sell you a ticket. Ain't no one watching that movie anyway. And like I said, this was 18 years ago, and I went to go see Matrix Revolutions, and there, it was in their biggest theater. There wasn't even 30 people in the whole auditorium. I mean, say what you want about Matrix Revolutions. I still personally think it has the best fight in the whole series between Agent Smith and Neo when they're in the, the rain and there's the big clouds. I mean, it was beautiful. I mean, you had these grandiose fights. You had Don Davis's percussive orchestral score. You had Hugo Weaving as Agent Smith. And in this movie, we're given basically an amalgamation of an Agent Smith through three different people. And it's, it's horrible. And we're constantly reminded through the flashbacks. If you watch the most recent Matrix Re uh, Resurrections trailer, and you watch it and you see how the guy's like, Mr. Anderson, and it cuts to the shot of Hugo Weaving. That's not just for the trailer. That's in the movie. That's most of the movie. Constant callbacks and reminders to a better fucking film series. This had no reason to exist. I will never watch this movie again. It will not go in my collection. I mean, obviously it's set up to make a, 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 you know, a new trilogy, Will I see the other, you know, films that follow this? Of course I will. For completest reasons only and nothing more. I mean, of course, you know, uh, what's his name? Forgive me. I'm so discombobulated. Oh, Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss, they give solid performances. They do a good enough job. I mean, it was fun to see them again. And... Yaha Abdul-Mateen II, he takes over for the Morpheus role that was originally played by Lawrence Fishburne. And I gotta say, for the first half of the film, this new Morpheus that we have, he's as charming as a Cheshire cat. He got some giggles out of the audience, and damn does he clean up in his suits. He's got a nice orange suit, a nice blue suit, a nice red robe. He's got charisma. He actually feels like a natural leader. And, I mean, I will say this. It seems like the Wachowskis have really good taste when it comes to black men, because Tony and uh, Anwar Mare, I believe his name is, 
he plays the operator in this film and he has the three things I love in a black man and that is he is bald he has big eyes and a big ass all oh, perfect I knew him as the character that Jamal was chasing after on Empire but it is rather funny all the operators have always been black men you know we have Tony in Resurrections and the operator in Reloaded and Revolutions was played by Harold Perrineau with his beautiful dreads and his great smile. And Marcus Chong played the operator in the original Matrix. And he never returned to the series because he unfortunately had a falling out with the Wachowskis, but that's another story. Look it up for yourself. But in summation, this movie just has so much exposition so much trying to talk about how it's going to be bigger, it's going to be better. It feels like such a big setup to something that's just not that exciting. It treads so much ground, but yet it feels like we haven't gone anywhere. This has such an abundance of side characters and silly moments that your investment is just gone by the time it gets to the 45 minute mark. I mean, the original Matrix film in particular, it had such a small, tight-knit cast of characters that you can remember their names, you can remember what happens to them, the situations. It worked so well. It was cohesive. The other two sequels that followed, a little muddled, but still at least consistent and easy to follow. This movie has so much going for it when it comes to side characters and, you know, trying to pull the rug out from under your feet and bringing this person back and doing this and doing that. You lose so much interest in one character in particular. Oh my God, I'm not going to spoil. Um, but one character makes a return who was in the sequels. And literally, while these characters are fighting each other about three quarters into the film all these main characters we just keep cutting back to this person who looks like a fucking hobo and they're just shouting and screaming things and not really making sense they're basically just there to do whatever i mean they probably shot this person's scene in one day i mean it was such a letdown this person that they brought back total total letdown and again before i forget it the way that this new morpheus you know, he was so charming in the first 45 minutes. He was great. He felt like a natural leader. And then he basically is a digital version of himself. And he also is a real person, but he feels like he's switched off. He doesn't, he doesn't have that consistency or the bravado continuing on. You see, when Lawrence Fishburne played Morpheus, he was sustained from start to finish. You know, he was just a cohesive leader. And this one, Yaha... He does it great for the very first half of the film. And then once we, you know, get to where we're going and the second half of the film goes and we get to, you know, like I said, where we're at, just falls flat. I mean, it was such a big setup, this movie was, to something that really didn't amount to much. If you're a diehard Matrix fan and you still think this is a good movie, keep lying to yourself. Because I'm sorry, this was not the T-Sis. And it goes without saying that the rating I'm going to go ahead and give to this Matrix Resurrections, this movie that was 18 years in the waiting for nothing at all in all actuality, because apparently they didn't learn their lesson 18 years ago when the third film flopped. This movie gets a well-deserved D+. And the reason I give it a D+, plus is because the plus goes for a decent cast, but the D is because of the misuse and the disrespect from three superior films that came before it. And I think if anything, if this does get another sequel or an add-on, it'll probably be straight to streaming or something like that. I'm not too sure, but this was not worth the hype. It was not worth the way. It was not worth seeing an IMAX or any of it. I mean, like I said, so many dry spots. Nobody cheered. Nobody clapped. Nobody, you know, ooh, there was not... There was a few giggles to be had, and the movie has an overly comedic tone as well that really does not suit this film. It was just a total letdown. And like I said, I regret wasting my 148 minutes watching it. This was my first and only time watching this movie willingly. And yeah, this, this could have been so much better, but what are you going to do? 
anyway, thank you guys again so much for listening to me rant about the Matrix Resurrections. I hope you guys have a nice, happy holidays. I will be reviewing some movies later on this week. Thank you so much for listening to this review again of the Matrix Resurrections. Please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done it already. And as always, thank you so much, and I will see you guys at the movies. Take care, and have a Merry Christmas.